<clears throat> I'm Paul Malcolm, and I'm going to take you to Delicious Town. What is Delicious Town? If I were to tell you what is Delicious Town and I wanted to get you hooked on something, Delicious Town is the opportunity to express flavor. It's that most memorable food experience that truly knocked your socks off. Delicious Town to me is going to a farmer's market and having my menu created by the palette of fruits and vegetables that are there for me to use. We want to make sure that we're getting the ingredients from a, a, a fresh, reliable, local source. Join me, Paul Malcolm. Let's go to Delicious Town. They, they're all super sweet. They've all been in the ground. We planted them last August. Even these, these giant ones, I tell, tell people they're, they're just as sweet as the little ones, but it's a little bit harder. You're going to eat it fresh, and get that's a little bit harder to bite, bite into. <laughs> So I'll take some little ones, okay. and uh, I'll take a pick of the big ones for, uh, for roast. Okay. These are just carrots that were harvested actually two days ago. They actually stayed in the ground, so they got some some uh, winter frost on them. They're nice and firm, which means they're going to have a nice sweetness to them. The nice size is going to be great for roasting. So when I roast them, I want to caramelize that surface sugar. I want to bring out those flavors. I want to taste a carrot. That's the beauty of eating food that comes from your backyard is, or coming from a local source. It's going to taste like what it's meant to be tasting like. Okay? What I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut the ends off. And I don't really want to cut very much of it off. I'm just going to cut the end off. The end tends to be a little bit bitter. Uh, that's where the greens were. And I just want to make sure I get those off. And then this just becomes annoying. How do I cook that and get that to be nice and uniform? It's not going to be, so it looks kind of funky. Although it does look kid cool for kids' crafts. It makes a very cool head on many small, imposable figures. We're going to take the carrots, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them in half. Right? And now I'm going to cut them into carrots. And this is where you really get to focus on your knife skills. I'm going to utilize my finger here. I'm going to use the magnetic surface that connects my knife to that surface. And I'm just basically going to turn. Each time I turn, I'm making a triangle. I'm going to taste the cat, because they're really good. And I'll get some beets, too. I'll get some, uh, that's cool. Oh, yeah. I'm going to take my beets, and the beets preparation is going to be very simple. I'm going to cut the ends off of the beets. I am going to pop them into water. I'm going to start them in cold water. I'm going to bring that to a simmer, and I'm going to cook them until they're fork tender. Cut the ends off. These, again, came from the same farm that the carrots did. They were picked uh, two days ago. That's why they're really firm. That's why the skins are nice and tight. It's just a better representation of flavor. Um, and the smell, again, the smell is incredible. I'm going to tilt the pan and dump my carrots in. And now we've got sizzle. And I'm just going to toss them in the pan to get them colored. I'm going to give them, over high heat, I'm going to give them some nice color on the top of the oven. I'm going to really work the excess or the, the outside surface sugars. And then I'm going to pop them in the oven and finish them until they're nice and soft. In the most successful kitchens, you'll, you really won't hear any communication. You'll hear people listening. You'll see little hand signals. You'll see little funny eye gestures. But it's really it's about a dance. And the dance is centered around the food. So, chicken. When you are raising chicken on a small scale is you're moving them around in paddocks. Generally you have something that looks like a little pup tent that you're moving around from place to place and you are doing multiple things. You're aerating the soil, you are allowing them to get a few worms here and there, but most importantly you're keeping them small, you're keeping them out and open. You're letting them do what chickens actually do. Breathe, eat, live, things like that. Simple things. They grow healthier, they grow happier, and that results in much healthier, happier food for us as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut up the chicken. I'm going to do it a little differently just to show you a different way. The main thing is when you get home, you just want to throw a chicken in the oven. But I'm going to show you how to cook a, a cut up a chicken so that it gives you a little bit more flexibility in how you're going to use it. So I'm going to show you how to cut something called a statler breast. It's a very simple chicken breast, but it has a little wing sticking out of it, so it looks really cool. It looks like you put a ton of time into doing it, but it's actually really simple to do. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to remove the wishbone. Now I've gotten the wishbone out, the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to French the wings. I'm, going to, I'm actually going to do what we call a ring cut around this bone, which is called the humerus. Do a ring cut all the way around, hold it upside down, use the back of my knife, and scrape it up. Okay. Now I'm going to go after the legs. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to French the legs as well. So as I scrape down, I, create, I notice this little joint right here. I'm going to pop into that joint. I'm going to slip down, I'm going to pop it off. So slide into the joint and pop off, and then you're going to take this whole cap off. Very cool. Also, really easy, looks cool. This is very cool. The French call this muscle the soliles, which means idiots leave it. 
Uh, we call it the oyster. And if you imagine how a, a, any kind of poultry animal roasts, all of the juices run down into the bone and fall into this great muscle here called the oyster. And the oyster is the most flavorful, tasty nugget. It is essentially delicious down. So we've got chicken breasts, we've got thighs, we've got our bones, we've got drumsticks, and we've got the wings left over. It's fantastic. I love it. <laughs> Whenever I'm searing meats or grilling meats, is I actually let them warm up to room temperature. The warmer they are, the better crust you're going to get on the outside. The better crust you're going to get is because you're not experiencing that temperature indifference. The temperature indifference comes from when you're experiencing really cold temperatures in the meat because they've been in your refrigerator, and then you slam them onto a really hot surface, what they're going to do is shed a tremendous amount of moisture, and that moisture is going to inhibit you from getting that really nice crust. So I like to let the meat warm up a little bit. I like to put it in an area mainly where my dog won't get it. So I put it up high or I put it in an area where I'm, where I'm going to see it. Generally, I put it back against the counter so I can see it. Now I'm going to give my carrots a little toss. You can see they're starting to take on some serious color. Okay, And once they start taking on color, now I'm going to pop them in the oven. I'm going to let them keep going in there. And I'm going to give them a toss every 10 minutes or so. You can also see my beets have started to come to a simmer. So now I'm going to reduce the heat on those and cook them until they're nice and fork tender.